Coming up today, President Park Geun-hye is due back in Seoul following a state visit to Iran. South Korea secured economic deals worth tens of billions of dollars and diplomatic support for its North Korea policy. South Korea's defense minister says North Korea is likely to conduct a fifth nuclear test sometime around the North's Workers' Party Congress set for Friday. But South Korea's ruling party has a new floor leader. Jong Jin Sok is tasked with getting the party back on track following its crushing loss in last month's general election. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, May 4th here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, President Park Geun-hye has wrapped up her historic state visit to Iran, sealing deal after deal during her stay. Seoul and Tehran will now be able to explore boundless business opportunities with each other. The president also helped win Iran's support for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, a diplomatic coup considering Tehran's long-standing ties with North Korea. Song Jisun starts us off. Korea's first state visit to Iran in 54 years was over and done within just 50 hours, but it could have hardly gone any better. President Park Geun-hye did not waste a single minute, taking step after step to upgrade bilateral relations in numerous fields. A staggering 37 billion U.S. dollars worth of deals to upgrade Iran's infrastructure were signed under the comprehensive partnership agreed between President Park and Rouhani. In their first joint statement, the two sides reaffirmed their commitment to a world free of nuclear weapons. Iran supports peace in the Korean Peninsula and is against any type of nuclear development. Our principle is that there should be no dangerous nuclear weapons in the Middle East or on the Korean Peninsula. Just hours after her summit talks with Rouhani, President Bak sat down with Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the country's highest figure in religion and politics. At the symbolic meeting as the first non-Muslim female leader to visit Iran, President Bak and Khamenei shared the common view of developing bilateral relations. President Bak also carried out her usual ritual while on an overseas trip. She attended a business forum to link Korean companies with local buyers, stressing the importance of culture at an exchange event, and meeting with overseas Koreans to encourage them to build bridges between the two countries. Her last step before boarding the plane was a visit to Iran's National Museum to gain a deeper understanding of Persian culture and its legacy. With the Iran trip, President Bakunay completed a train of visits to Iran, Turkey and the Arab nations during her term, reinforcing her diplomacy in the Middle East. Song Jisun, Arirang News, Tehran. Now, Korea and Iran also held a business forum in Tehran during the president's stay. The presidential office says the event was the biggest ever, both in terms of size and the anticipated economic value to be held under the current Park Geun-hye administration. Shin Se-min reports. It was one of the largest business-to-business -business gatherings ever held under the current administration with the highest business results expected to roll in. Korea's presidential office said Tuesday that the major business forum held in Tehran, which included some 500 business delegates from South Korea and Iran, is expected to produce over 52 million U.S. dollars worth of economic value. The Korean side was represented by President Park Geun-hye, Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-hye, Trade Minister Chu hyung won and 236 Korean business leaders. There, 146 small and mid-sized enterprises, 38 large conglomerates, and 52 economic organizations, public firms, and hospitals from Korea inked over 30 deals. Experts say that the business forum was not only the largest ever, but also one that laid down a foundation of trust for Iranian businesses as President Park ensured the quality and the potential of Korean firms. 
Although the provisional deals may not all result in final projects, experts say Korean firms now have better footing in Iran. Through outstanding skills and trust the Korean firms acquired before international sanctions on Iran, it is safe to say that Korean companies are likely to win more orders than its competitors, and that's what we'll see in the near future. Korea's top office added that the favorable outcome of business talks and the positive attitude towards future deals are a clear result of strength and trust between Korean and Iranian firms. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, it's looking more and more likely that North Korea will conduct a fifth nuclear test in the coming days as the regime prepares to hold a rare party con congress that uh, will start at the end of this week. Jim Young gil reports. The South Korean military has once again confirmed that North Korea is ready to conduct a nuclear test at any time. Even after international warnings since its fourth nuclear test, North Korea is prepared and has the capability to conduct a fifth nuclear test at any time. Defense Minister Han Minggu, speaking at a parliamentary defense committee meeting on Tuesday, echoed earlier projections and said the test is likely to come sometime around the North Workers' Party Congress set for Friday. He also said the North Pungeri nuclear test site appears ready for a new test. The defense minister sought to assure lawmakers that the military is ready to respond to provocations from the North and would not only mobilize its military but join forces with the United States. He also said the South Korean military is stepping up its anti-submarine capabilities in conjunction with the U.S. Army, in light of the North test of a submarine-launched ballistic missile last month. The Joint Chiefs of Staff of South Korea and the U.S. are discussing how to counter SLBM attacks from North Korea. We're working on how to execute a quicker response time. In addition, Han touched on the deployment of the THAAD U.S. missile defense system, saying Ho will provide the land and facility for the system, while the U.S. will bear the operational costs. Han also discussed the ministry's analysis of North Korea's fourth nuclear test in January. He said no xenon isotopes, which are part of an H-bomb signature, have been found, meaning that the bomb detonated was atomic. Kim young Arirang News. The United States has reiterated that it will never accept North Korea as a nuclear power. Speaking in Washington on Tuesday, Daniel Russell, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, said there's no change on the solid U.S. policy toward the North. He stressed that the U.S. government's top priority is protecting the country and its allies by way of denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. The secretary's remarks came as the Korea Economic Institute of America says North Korea may officially declare permanent nuclear state status at its Workers' Party Congress on Friday. The institute's vice president, Mark Takola, said the declaration would be deemed a major achievement for Kim Jong-un and one that puts him on par with his father and grandfather. South Korea's ruling Sonunu party has elected a new floor leader. The four-term lawmaker will be required to steer the Conservative Party out of the crisis following its crushing defeat in last month's general election. On the Liberal side, the main opposition Minju Party of Korea has decided when to hold its party convention to elect a new chairman. Park ji reports. Ruling Senori Party lawmakers have elected fellow four-term lawmaker-elect Jung jin Seok as their new floor leader and his running mate Kim kwang nim as the party's chief policymaker. In a vote that was held after more than two hours of policy debates, Chung, a former journalist and senior presidential secretary, garnered 69 votes from his fellow lawmakers to win the position. Another political heavyweight, Na kyung won earned 43 votes, while former fisheries minister and four-term lawmaker Yu ki jun received just seven nods. The 55-year-old politician, known for his communication skills and ability to receive broad support across factions, vowed to revamp the party along with his experienced chief policymaker Kim kwang nim the new floor leader said he ultimately hopes to contribute to the party's victory in the next presidential election.
As the Park and Hay administration is entering its fourth year, we will try to secure new driving forces of state affairs, aiming to achieve many accomplishments. For this goal, we plead with fellow lawmakers to focus on cooperation and communication. The main opposition also held a special meeting of all its recently elected lawmakers Tuesday afternoon. The Minju Party of Korea unanimously decided to hold its next convention either at the end of August or early September to elect the Liberal camp's new leadership. Current interim leader Kim Jong-in will continue to lead the party until then. The main opposition party is also set to elect a new floor leader Wednesday afternoon, replacing current floor leader Lee jong -gol. The minor opposition People's Party, which already confirmed veteran Park Ji-won as the next floor leader, has begun a series of educational seminars to prep its first-term lawmaker elects. The sessions cover diverse topics from economy, welfare to security and aim to ensure they are able to fulfill their legislative duties to the best of their abilities. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Staying with domestic politics and the new floor leader of the ruling Senuri party is getting straight to work to promote collaboration with the opposition camps. Jong Jin Sok is set to meet on Wednesday with the Speaker of the National Assembly and the leadership of the main opposition Minju Party of Korea and the minor opposition People's Party to discuss the best way to steer parliamentary affairs. Jong will be accompanied by the party's new chief policymaker Kim Gwang Lim. Political pundits say Jong wants to build a constructive relationship given the new political landscape following his party's defeat in last month's general election. Now, most of Korea had a prolonged spring shower on Tuesday, and while the rain has basically stopped, the country is still being buffered by unusually strong winds. The Korea Meteorological Administration says the wind will be especially strong in Kangwondo Province and Gyeongsangbukdo Province. The public are advised to take extra caution and farmers have been urged to protect their crops. Now, the gusty winds have uprooted trees in some areas and ripped roofs off makeshift buildings. Korea's southern Jeju Island was hit the hardest with winds of up to 70 kilometers an hour and 400 millimeters of rain. Thousands of passengers had been stranded at Jeju International Airport on Monday night as bad weather grounded flights. Services resumed Tuesday with an extra 60 flights laid on to cope with the backlog. Now, one of Seoul's best-loved tourist hotspots, Gyeongbukgung Palace, will be lit up and open for visitors in the evenings all of this month of May, giving visitors another way to appreciate the ancient treasures within. EG1 reports. Gyeongjeon Hall shimmers under the moonlight as colorful lights illuminate the main throne hall at Gyeongbukgung Palace. It's a serene atmosphere and projects a different kind of beauty than in the daytime. Despite a chilly wind, a crowd of visitors ventured out to enjoy a special evening tour of the royal palace. It's nice to be out with my family and with the lights on. The palace looks much more amusing too. The palace is opening its doors for night tours for a month this spring through June 2nd. It's one of only four times a year the palace is open at night. Gyeongbokgung Palace was once home to the kings and queens of the Joseon dynasty. Despite it having been demolished by the Japanese in the early 20th century, it was restored in 1990 and now it stands as the biggest and grandest of the five palaces in Seoul. The tour takes guests through six sites including Gyeongwiro Pavilion, one of the most famous of the palace structures and a national treasure. The name Gyeonghwe means festival, and the pavilion is where kings once held banquets and feasts for foreign envoys and other special guests. Surrounded by a glass-like pond, it's also a popular photo spot for visitors. It was actually great. I mean, we were very impressed and about how it looks. I mean, uh, this, I mean this, is, this is really amazing. It's just huge. I mean, colorful. To preserve the palace, only 2,800 visitors are allowed every night, and there are 550 tickets for foreigners and senior citizens who will need to line up to buy their tickets on the day they visit. All other visitors have to make a reservation, but the spots book up fast, so it pays to make plans in advance. Lee ji Arirang News.
Well, that's all we have for now on this Wednesday morning here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you as always for watching our newscasts and we'll be back throughout the day with more bulletins. Our next one coming up at 10 a.m. Korea time. So until then, goodbye.